All right, let's solve the challenge. Let's make us, when we move within 100 pixels of the walls, that the walls start to move away from us, which will look weird and have very little point in the game, but it's almost like some uh, magical superpower, right? So it says to code this one in the player step. And uh, a good reason to put this in the player step is so that it's always taking place, right? So it's always going to be checking. Where's that nearest wall? Make it move away from me if it's within 100 of me. So let's give this a go. First of all, finding the nearest wall. Um, let's call that n wall for nearest wall. And I'll use that method instance nearest. Uh, it wants an x and a y position, which is mine. And the object I'm checking is going to be the wall objects. Now that I've got that nearest wall, let's find out if it's within 100 pixels of me. So how about distance equals? I use another method, point distance. I'm going to check from my x, y to n walls x and n walls y. So remember this whole idea, right, about this lesson was that is an ID number of an object. And every ID object or ID number of an object will let you access the variables inside that object just by using the dot. Okay, so now I have the distance. Now I'll just quickly ask if that distance is less than 100. I want to do a little more work. Now this extra work I do, if it's within 100, involves making the wall move away. Now just for testing purposes, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to say with, whoops, sorry, with n wall instance destroy. Now, I know that's not what the challenge said to do, but I'm just going to do this as a quick test to make sure my code is actually working. So if the distance is less than 100, destroy that n wall that I just found. Let's give this a go to make sure this is working and these walls are disappearing. Then we can actually take away that destroy code and work at making the walls move away from us. So get ready to see a lot of walls being destroyed. And as I get within 100, the nearest wall is destroyed. But of course, this is in the step event. So you can see a lot of walls get destroyed uh, pretty fast, right? 30 walls a second if I can move fast enough. Okay. Confident that works. Let's take that out. And now let's do a little more. If the distance is less than 100, I want to make that particular wall move away from me. To do this, I need to know the direction. So let's make a little, uh, I'll call it this way. And the direction that I want to make that wall move, I'm going to use the point distance method. And I'm going to say from me to that wall's position, which is nwall.x, nwall.y. If you think about it, player towards that wall piece that is the direction away from the player, perfectly. Now all I have to do is make the wall go that way. And there's two ways to do it. I could, uh, I'll do it one way here. I'll say with n wall, direction equals this way. But instantly I have a little bit of a problem here. This way is a variable inside of the player. Once I go inside of that wall, it doesn't know about this way. But if you remember way back from older lessons, when you go into a width statement to grab a variable that's outside of that width, I could just say other dot this way. So that actually should work. And of course, I need the speed as well to pick up a bit. So I can say speed is... Let's give this a go. Then I'll show you the other way to do this. That's a little bit, probably you'll go, oh, that's way easier. So let's see here if my walls all start to move away. Oh, they're all going weird directions. I've done something wrong with my X and Y's. That's just not right. Okay, let's see what went wrong there. It's crazy. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. I said point distance, but what I'm trying to solve for there is point direction. So I actually didn't mix up my X and Ys. X, Y, X, Y. I was just using the wrong method there, and nobody yelled loud enough. Okay, let's give this a go. And blowing back the walls. Nice little effect. Imagine you have a game, you have a special uh, power up, right? Blows things back for a bit. You know, nice little idea. Now, the other way to code that would have been to just take that out for a sec. And I could have actually just done this. Nwall.speed is 2. Nwall.direction is this way. And so this is probably, uh, you'll look at that and go, oh, that's easier. Okay, and that's totally fine to do that as well. Okay, because the ID has access to the variables. Now, that works as well. Just give you a little proof of it here. But while we're doing the run here, we also want to mention that we never took care of the fact that when all the walls are gone. Now, I'm not destroying walls, so I'll never actually have all the walls gone. But if for some reason in your game the walls could all be disappeared or all be gone or destroyed, you do have to check that. You don't want this thing to send back negative 4 and then you try to go negative 4.x, negative 4.y, all the way down here, or even negative 4.speed is 2, you'll get the error in your game. So you should do a little check of some sort. Um, a typical one here is we could always say, uh, before we actually check, we could say if instance exists a wall, we can put all that code inside of an if statement. So if we have walls existing, then we do the code that we uh, just typed out there. And then that's really the perfect solution for this. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got that one on your own.